My name is uh, Vincent Mayol and uh, this is uh, Sami Maki. Uh, we will show you uh, poker, uh, poker uh, Y10 uh, PyKR. Uh, this is a software uh, to uh, uh, manage uh, your uh, Docker file. But uh, before starting, uh, let me uh, recap uh, Docker usage. Docker is uh, useful to uh, provide the services. For example, if I need uh, PostgreSQL, uh, I can type this command. And uh, I have uh, PostgreSQL running on the port uh, 5000. Uh, generally, containers are uh, customizable using environment variable. Uh, in this example, uh, I can uh, change uh, default uh, PostgreSQL using uh, PostgreSQL uh, password uh, environment variable. Uh, if I want to uh, launch another uh, container, uh, I can uh, do using the same uh, command. Is it uh, not a problem because uh, each container uh, are uh, isolated using a dedicated uh, network? And uh, the minus p option uh, creates a bridge between the host and the container. Uh, Docker allows to uh, wrap services in the container. For example, this is a Django project. And uh, if I want to wrap this project in the container, I can create a file named uh, Docker files containing this instruction uh, to install uh, USB and uh, copy requirement.txt from uh, uh, from a project folder. The project folder is a uh, uh, Docker context. And uh, set uh, on set environment variable to, uh, to select uh, production settings. When my uh, Docker uh, file is done, I can uh, build uh, my image uh, using uh, Docker image uh, command. Um, the dot at uh, the end of the command uh, is a Docker context. During the image uh, building, uh, all file uh, is a search here. And uh, after, I can launch my container using a Docker run command. If uh, I have uh, several containers to manage, I can use uh, Docker Compose. Uh, it, it is a YAML file. I uh, define uh, all my services on which uh, Docker image is using by uh, each services. Uh, if I uh, need push environment variable, I can use uh, uh, services file for env. And uh, I can use a uh, volume to share uh, static files between uh, NGX and uh, Django. When my Docker file is done, I can use a uh, Docker Compose command to uh, start uh, all my service. OK. Thank you. So after this introduction, uh, we've seen that you can use containers not only for production, but also uh, for development. Uh, so there's a, a lot of use cases in which containers can be useful. Um, as, a, as written here, developing, testing, extra. Also for uh, packaging your application, you can release it through containers, as it's already done in many projects. Um, and also for prototyping a new software when you want to use a new software uh, and you don't want to, to install it with all its dependencies, installing it uh, through a Docker is very useful because you just don't want the image, use it, and then you throw it away with all its dependencies so it doesn't pollute your uh, computer. Um, so, um, we fa we've started to use uh, Docker for developing and also for uh, putting in production uh, our software. Um, but it turned out that we had different um, 
uh, requirements between the en development environment and the production environment. Um, for instance, uh, when you developing a software, you want uh, to be able to push the code you've just done uh, very quickly to your uh, running environment. Um, so to, to see how it affects the code, extra. Um, and but uh, in a production environment, you don't want to have it like embedded in the image and stable. So um, we faced uh, these, those issues, um, and we had uh, we started uh, using Docker and Docker Compose uh, for both uh, environments that we had. Um, but we wanted like to, to, to have those differences without recreating two different sets of Docker files and <laughs> also two different Docker Compose files. Uh, so we started it as a script uh, to allow us to um, template uh, the different uh, data we want to have changed between those two. And it quickly become a, a whole software uh, because of the requirements that uh, improved. So that's the reason why we, we developed Poker, uh, which basically is a extensive templating engine um, with some extra um, feature for manipulating Docker images, like pulling, pushing, building them, uh, and also uh, allowing you to create smaller environments that you can uh, launch and deploy on the same computer, uh, having them isolated, but at the same time um, uh, quickly launched. Um, because one of the problems we're facing, and maybe it happened to you too, uh, so I'm a developer, I develop a new feature, and um, I got a new bug ticket, and I have to fix it. It's not the same version I'm working on, it's like a, another version, and I haven't installed it for a while. I don't know how it works anymore. Uh, so I have to find a way to, to deploy it so I can investigate the bug to reproduce it. Because you don't want to go on production for debugging, right? You don't do that. <laughs> so we had this requirement to, to be able to deploy several environments uh, on the same computer. So I'm going to show you quickly how you can have a different environment um, uh, deployed on your computer, and then explain you how to do that with Poker. Okay. So, um, <coughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe too much, right? Is it okay? Okay. Okay for everyone? Yeah, maybe I'll just remove the bold. Um, so, uh, with poker, um, we have different notions 
uh, we have uh, an environment which um, is um, formalization or um, how you want to deploy your containers. So for instance, an environment can be either development or production or even test if you want to deploy your containers for um, a specific uh, environment like you want to deploy only one container and test it and you want to have another tool testing it, for instance like a protector or something else, so you can have a different environment. Um, this environment has to be done by uh, developers um, for configuring the different uh, variables that will be pushed um, in the templating engine. And from this environment, which is a, a definition, you create a card, which is an instance of an environment. Um, in the card, you can override the, the values provided in the environment to have a, a very fine uh, templating level. So, to start, I'm going to uh, create a card um, with my uh, dev environment, and I'm going to call it test. So here I've configured it to go and fetch my sources from a git. This is a, a, from GitHub, but you can also uh, provide uh, poker sources from a local folder or wherever you want. And if we have a look at what happened, um, he just created a, a card folder uh, in which uh, with the same name, and in which you can find uh, a meta.yaml and a source file. Source files are all the sources fetched from the git, and meta.yaml is all the data contained uh, uh, which are uh, specific to, to this, uh, this instance. Um, now I'm going to run another command, which is card make. And Pocket, what he just did is from the metas and the template that he has, he created uh, all the context and Docker files required for building uh, and spinning up the environment. Uh, and here I can, from this, just uh, launch it. So some of you might recognize some comments which are common to Docker Compose because we are uh, leveraging it in the project. And so Poker App is common names from Compose. Um, so here what happened, um, Poker uh, created all the images from you using the Docker files templated and the context it created, built the image, and then he also built uh, from the Docker Compose template uh, a Docker Compose uh, right for this environment and uh, spun it up. Um, so here, if we have a look, we can have uh, we can see that we have a, a Django which is started on, on the machine. And without my explanation, it would have took like, uh, I don't know, 10 seconds. So, um, so this is my uh, environment um, uh, for developing. But now let's say I want to, to create another one uh, for um, debugging something which has the same configuration and uh, set up as my uh, uh, production. So I'm going to pocket card create a, a while this time setting the production uh, environment <coughs> and call it prod. So here it's just going to fetch the same sources but of course you can add uh, extra variables during this process. And for instance, um, 
I could have added uh, the name of a specific branch that you would have pulled and, um, uh, and built it the way it has to be for this version. So you don't have to, to remember how to deploy this version because if it's the last one, it's okay. But if the one that's um, two months old or I don't know, one year old, some, somehow you don't know or forgot. Um, so I'm, I can uh, create, uh, make the card. And here we can see um, that we have the new card created with all the data which are different. So, okay, now I've shown you uh, how it works, but you're gonna tell me, okay, so what's behind it? Because I, I just want to use it and I want to know how to, to use it for my project. So, um, that's, I'm gonna start explaining it a bit. It might be very long, so I'm gonna make it short and I'm gonna, I won't talk about uh, everything possible, but just for letting you see how it works. So we define an environment, as I said earlier, it can be either for production or development or even testing. So what you need um, is a, a description of this environment, which is basically a YAML file uh, containing all the data. I'm gonna show you later how it is. Uh, and also Docker files and um, uh, all the templates that you might need, for instance, for configuration, um, or everything like that. So if we have a look at the Docker file template, if you remember what Vincent showed earlier, we had this Docker file which uh, described how to um, build a Docker image. And here's a templated version. So you, you can see that we can, in the template, leverage all that the, the functionalities that Jinja provides, which means a lot, um, with a very dynamic uh, output, or add um, with if extra. You can here inject variables simply, and you can also, um, I said earlier, we had an extensive, because we can add plugin to poker, so you can inject uh, Python functions in the templates. Um, for example, this one is, is very uh, used in our project because it can, according to the environment, um, say whether you need to copy the file into the image, meaning that when you have the image, it contains all your sources, or uh, mount them as a volume. So the file system on the machine is exported inside the container when it's run, and then you, when you modify it with uh, your uh, IDE, then all the source code is directly inside the container, for instance. So that's a template. Um, and then we need the environment, uh, which is uh, a YAML file with uh, default variables. So we have some related to the driver. So we, for now we have a functional driver for Docker Compose, but we'd like to extend it to make it work with Kubernetes also, uh, and uh, more precise also with Minikube, which allow you to have a Kubernetes environment on your laptop. Um, we have uh, what we call default metas, which are, which are um, the default values. So for instance, you can imagine that for a development environment, you don't care about putting a, a Postgres a password, which is uh, very secure. But when you deploy it to your production, when you want to have a very strong password. So here you have default metas, and when deploying a production uh, environment, you can override it with a, a more secure value, which would be stored in your card, and then you can reuse it uh, through different versions. <laughs> and then the second part of the environment files is describing uh, which containers are gonna be built. So here we don't have, we have three different containers. The two first one, uh, we do not have a lot uh, 
of options because we just use uh, Postgres and Nginx directly from uh, the Docker Hub, which is a place where you can fetch all the images you need. And for the third one, this is one which uh, will rent uh, the Django and um, uh, gonna <coughs> have the uh, source in it. Uh, we define which Docker file the poker should you, uh, it should use, and also uh, what are the files it requires for building the context. So that's very simple. So that's how you create the card and launch it, uh, what I showed earlier. And see, that's what I also mentioned, that you can override any value contained in the environment. OK, uh, that's it. That's short. It might require a lot more explanations, but uh, that's what, the, what we wanted to show. Uh, to go further, we'd like to increase the number of drivers um, and also add uh, standard extensions. For now, I've just shown you um, the Git one, which allows you to fetch the Git uh, repo as a source, uh, as a source and also um, the add vo auto volume, which was doing the switch between add or uh, volume for copying or not the files. Um, but for our project, we made a lot of more specific extensions, but we'd like to increase the number of them inside the, the core project. And that's it. Thank you very much. And questions? <laughs> okay. Uh, en français aussi, les questions, si vous voulez. Merci. Okay, merci. Thank you very much.